Daniel san. Daniel san. What? Come here. How did you do that? Shut up! Show me wax on, wax off. Aye. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Hey, wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Concentrate. Look in my eye. Lock a hand. Thumb inside. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Wax on. Wax off. What's up, guys? We have a 200-card PSA mail day split between two orders that we're going to jump into. We're going to go into it really, really quick. Just got the, some of these cards I sold at the Phoenix Sports Card Show this past weekend. Um, no sacks were scrubbed in the making or preparation of these cards. No waxing, no nothing. So, all clean. Have, again, sold some of these cards either at the show or on eBay. I'm going to try to fill in some of the gaps here as we go. Uh, the first card in the order, it's going to be a 29 card order, and then we're going to jump into a 171 card order. Again, not every single card is listed here. Um, the first one was actually a Wilt Chamberlain Prism Silver that came back at PSA 10. I did end up selling that online. Um, so the first card we're going to jump into, Travis Kelsey. Uh, Swifties, uh, big squeeze. PSA 10, Stroud, PSA 10. We're, and we're going to go try to go as quickly as we can. Again, in between that Stroud, I also had a Kobe Blue Prism 9 from Select number 249 that I did end up selling as well. Um, so that one is out. Then we got SP All Stars. A Holding Court Jordan 8. Finest Jordan 10. Back to back 9. Then we also are jumping down to some Steph Curry. So I have a PSA 8, but I also had a 10. And that 10 has also flown off the shelf. To eBay and it is it is sold so next we've got Bo Nix way overpaid for this this is a bad bad purchase I think by the time I sell the PSA 10 I may break even on this so I don't know why I bought it or why I paid what I did for it but it was really really not smart and then we're going to jump into the financials on this as well so um, got a lot of these pism ah, pism piss pism pism got a lot of prism breaks a lot of these guys and I have something in mind that I want to use these guys for, um, but worst case, I'm going to sell some of them online. Some of these Prison Break Silvers, I have been selling these. These have, he's, these have dropped a little bit, so I've been moving them right around 100 bucks if I get them in. And then we've also got a couple Strouds, so just one nine. Almost done with this first order. Um, Next, there's a host of NBA Prism Silvers that I sold already. Those things are selling like hotcakes. So the first one was a Brandon Miller PSA 10. So I ended up moving that one for around 400 or 425. Uh, then I had a Cam Wetmore 10, sold that one. I do still have a Cam 9, and then I have another Cam Wetmore 10. And of course, no order is going to be complete without some Wimby. Uh, card number 136. So that green, uh, I did sell this one at the show in cash. So that was a nice sale. Uh, first green, I've got plenty more, maybe five or six sitting at, at PSA. Now we've got a couple Wimby inserts. So this is a silver PSA 10. And if these guys have fingerprints and stuff all over the cases, it's because they were molested at the show, not by me in preparation. Again, it's the outside case. So uh, lots of fingers touching these cards, unfortunately. Um, that is the first quarter. So 29 cards. Let's quickly, quickly, quickly take a look at how profitable this order will be before we jump into the next one, just because I know people want to see that. has a pretty nice profitability, so ROI of 63%. Total cost of goods sold, roughly about 2000 Grading expense, five ninety nine sixty. Actually, this was not a modern special because I paid $20.68 card, so that includes return shipping, so that means this, this was one, a $19 order. I did squeeze in a modern order at the Burbank. This was just a... You know, I actually found a lot of the, some of these cards at the show. Like I bought the Wilt Chamberlain there at the show. I paid one fifty for it. As we go through here, you can see the prices, what I paid for it, what I have sold or expect to sell. Um, so we're looking at roughly about forty three hundred dollars in total receivables, uh, and then with the grading expense, we're looking at a to total profit of about sixteen ninety. So ROI of about sixty three percent. Not bad. Not bad for a twenty nine card order. All right, so now we're going to jump into the 171 card order. 
And I have sold maybe five or six cards out of this one, but we're gonna again go pretty quick through this. And I've already put some of these guys in order because I had to put them in order to get some stuff sold and shipped out yesterday. Gotta maintain that top rated seller status. I cannot be late on shipping. So if somebody buys cards, I'm wanting to get that stuff out within one day just to maintain that 10% discount on fees. Whew. Amounts to maybe a 1.2, 1.3% discount. So I guess I'm on 300,000 plus in sales, that kind of does add up. So I uh, do want to maintain that. MJ PSA 10. So what I did here, uh, you'll see a lot of these are Michael Jordans from the same set. I bought two 1994 Upper Deck Rare Air sets, uh, broke into them and tried to submit the most gradable cards. And these cards, I do not recommend doing this at all. These cards bounce around in those boxes and they've been bouncing around in those boxes for you know close to 30 years. And it is very, very difficult to find cards that do not have damaged corners. So the other cool thing about this is the Upper Deck uh, Jordan Rare Air sets do have a gold version, meaning every single card in the set is gold. And the odds of, of receiving a complete gold set are, uh, it's, rumored one out of every case and i believe the case had 12 sets in a case so one of those sets was a gold set and you have to crack it open to see if it's gold and it's very difficult to identify if the card is in fact gold because it's based on this hologram here at the back of course none of mine ended up coming back unfortunately as a gold but i did get some really nice gems out of this in terms of some low pop cards and also some really cool ones um, I like the ones that have him in his early uniform days, so like a, you know his rookie year. This one's a really cool one, man. This is I, I grew up collecting MJ. I still have a lot of MJ stuff from whenever I was a kid that I opened up. You know, just low end inserts that were some of my favorite ones, etc. So I really like this stuff. Just to me, that that's, that's kind of neat. Um, MJ decade of, decade of excellence. So I got a bunch of these guys to to gym, which was nice. We'll go through those, and we're almost done. There's another MJ set in here as well that we'll go through. Got another Decade of Dominance. This is a cool card. Not a rookie card, but it kind of looks like one. It's kind of, they call it rookie card, but I think this is one of the coolest cards ever. I did not know that this card existed, so what is this from? This is not Rare Air. This is from the 1998, 1998 Upper Deck MJ Career Collection. And every single set has, you know, I want to say 60 cards. And this is one of the cards that comes in the set. So I did the exact same thing. I bought two sets, cracked into them, see uh, you know, which set that I can get. And it, I thought this was really cool. This is the card that you want to get out of the set and get it graded. It's not a rookie card, but people, I don't like anything that says rookie card on it. People will go, oh, premium. So I, I said, did two of them, one, and it doesn't matter what grade you get them in, you still want to send them in to get graded. So that one was a six. I think it had corner damage. That's very similar to the damage that you see in most of the cards in these sets. I did get one that came back in nine. This one's a beautiful card, just slightly off center left or right, but I did get a nine. So I'm very happy with that one. Uh, then we got Pictures of Excellence, PSA 9. This is a really cool set. I like this one. Um, because the cards kind of vary. It's not just the same type of card. And you're going to see, I got a really, really good PSA 10 in this that is extremely low pop, and I don't really know how to value it. Um, PSA 10. So we'll come up on that. It's actually next. It is this one. So this is a pop 11. And this one's also pretty cool because, again, they call it Rookie of the Year. Now, in 1996, Upper Deck had a die-cut insert called Rookie of the Year Collection. And Michael Jordan was in that set. And the PSA 10s for that, it's the exact same card, it's die-cut, is, you know, over $2,000. This card, also low pop, not the die-cut version, comes in a box set, so there's more of them. Still very low pop. I don't really know how to value this. I actually had this listed for $250 and somebody kept trying to haggle me on it. Finally, I said, you know what? I'm jacking the price up to a thousand and just filled in offers. I'm probably gonna auction it off, honestly. I think this is one of the coolest MJ cards I've ever graded. Really, really cool. Um, kind of under the radar type of a card. I always wanted the die cut version, never got it. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty pumped to actually get that card to come back at 10. It's funny, I actually wanted 
the other rookie card to come back a 10, but that one ended up coming back a 10, and I think it may be a better card. And I really like this. This career collection is really cool because it's taking really neat examples of cards that MJ had throughout his upper deck career and putting them into a collection. This Jordan 23 Knight, uh, Knights experience is ju they're jumbo cards, five by seven. So this is like commemorating a commemorative set. <laughs> it's like Inception. Same thing with this. This is not from the Tribute set. This is, uh, which is Visions, which there were three series for Jordan Tributes. There was Visions, there was Reflections, and I can't remember the other one, all coming out over the spread of three years. This is like a tribute to the Tribute set. So again, very weird if that makes sense. Uh, PSA 9. I love these Jordan 23 Knights. I have the, the jumbo box set. Whenever PSA has a, a special, I eventually want to get all those jumbo MJ sets graded. Come on, Nat. I know you're listening. I know you are listening. You guys are listening to me whenever you came out with your March specials. Uh, something I'm going to do a video on, uh, FYI. And every single March special is exactly what I recommended that you guys should do. So come on, bring us a jumbo, jumbo special, just maybe for like one month. That way we can get some of these jumbo MJs and some slabs. All right, so you can kind of see this. Again, this is not a 1992 Upper Deck card. This is just commemorating that card. So this is a really cool concept. I like this. Um, that was a, a, an insert set as well, the Mr. June set from 1992-93 Upper Deck. This is also a jumbo set. This set, the Jordan Journals, actually has on-card MJ autographs inserted into the box set. A very under-the-radar Jordan complete set that could go up in value over time just because not every single one of those autographs has been uncovered. So we got another one of these. You all saw PSA 7 previously. This one's a PSA 8. Love that card. Great. Always had it as a kid. Just sold this one this morning for 170 so I got to get this one shipped out. I'm going to set this one to the side. Then again, more MJs. Got a lot of stuff. So this one, that another finest tin, and this one's the finest silver. This card usually always does between 225, 275. Jordan, or sorry, Griffey Diamond Cuts, uh, 1997 Flare Showcase. Love Flare, love Flare. Ni late 90s inserts, just the best, the absolute best. Uh, this card, a new had a little bit of surface issues on it. I think it was like a, a big surface line, maybe going to the back of it. So this one's coming back to PSA 7, but don't even care, man. Beautiful card. Any MJ from the 90s, from, that's an insert, belongs in a slab. This was really nice. I had to really clean the surface, meaning microfiber cloth wipe down. This card came so dirty. It, it almost looked like the top loader this card came in was in mud. I, I had to you know, scrub that dong for a long time. 2002 Topps Chrome, Joe Maurer. This is like a Pop 58. You all saw, have seen some of the videos I've done about some of these guys. I can't believe there's so few of these out there in PSA 10. Um, so again, first ballot Hall of Famer, low pop rookie card. Ah, that's recipe for success. Now more Joe Mowers, PSA 10s. Just the base tops, pristine. And then we've also got, this is the uncommon version. So there's common, uncommon, rare. This is the uncommon number 1999. Very similar to how Top's Finest did it back in the day. All right, so let's go ahead and put some of these guys back in the box. All right, MJ, Upper Deck Flight Team, PSA 10. This is the second one of these that I've gotten. So pumped about that. I haven't sold one yet, but I've seen him go between 400 and 500. This was a sneaky, sneaky good card. Bowman Chrome Draft X Fractors, Justin Verlander, PSA 9, numbered to 250. Very, very sneaky good. Some Bowman Chrome Draft. His Bowman Chrome was an autograph, so this is his only base from 2005. Really like that. We've got Flight Team Hot Pack, PSA 8. Then Flight Team Hot Pack, which shows that this is in the silver, so that's a, a, a PSA 9. Now we got the regular one, which features this in gold. That is a PSA 6. Meh. And of course, they have the Upper Deck uh, Reserve one as well, which is kind of like a refractor version. I've got that in PSA 10. Uh, Upper Deck Goodwin Champions Preview. Love this card. Love, love, love this card. Last year of Upper Deck uh, as an official NBA licensed product. So love that. Bulls uniform. Didn't do so hot on this. Uh, PSA 7 probably has some, uh, maybe a corner issue or something like that. Looks like a surface dent right up there by the Bowman logo. So that'll be a cheapie. And we got Otani Mini, PSA 9. Man, I was hoping to get 10 on that one. 
Heritage Gallery, PSA 10. Rookie Sensations Otani, PSA 10. Got the Acuna from this set also as a PSA 10. Different order. Let's put these guys up. Next one, we got the Kang. The Kang. First year Net Marvels, if I'm not mistaken. 2019. So that's why I ended up going after this. I don't like that they've used this insert set you know, for future years, but I like the original first year set. And that's what that one is, I believe. Got some Yamamatos, PSA 10. Some Rokies. I've already filled two of the Rokie PSA 10s. And there's nine. Got a Brock Purdy Prism Black PSA 10. Man, his stuff has dropped. Drop, drop, dropped. I didn't think that his stuff was going to drop as quickly as it did. Dude, that, that just must prove there's a, a love affair with Joe Burrow. Because Joe Burrow stuff really didn't... I mean, yeah, it dropped after the Super Bowl. So I did do a video on my predictions on what would happen with card prices for Mahomes and Purdy. I predicted if Mahomes won, prices really wouldn't go up, which they haven't. Um, for Purdy, I didn't think that prices would really crash all that much either. I thought he would get the Joe Burrow effect. I think his prices have fallen definitely more than Mahomes' prices have gone up. So overall, the Super Bowl, can, the players in the Super Bowl, it's been a net negative. <laughs> Purdy's dragging the prices down. Um, big card here. I'm glad that I finally am getting some of these parallels to come back in. So my prices, my replacement prices are now higher for old Wyatt Langford. Oh, Wyatt. Wyatt Langford. CJ Stroud, PSA 9. I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know what I missed on this. PSA 6. Kind of weird. Stars. Oh, man. Man, did I do that? I don't know if I did that. Maybe I did. I don't know. Dang, that's bad. Good gosh. Well, no, it's PSA 6. PSA 9. PSA 9. I don't even know. I don't even know how that happens. <laughs> Massive surface damage. PSA 10. PSA 10. PSA 9. Oh, oh, Tyler. You only go grade score Stroud rookies. It's <laughs> what the mouth breathers say. You only grade Stroud score rookies. Even my 12-year-old knows better. <laughs> well, I mean, I sold one of them for $39.99. I paid five bucks for it, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, easy money. PSA 10, extra points. Yeah, I don't get that. I mean, you, you purposely seek out my channel to watch the content, and you think that I'm like one of the... You say I'm one of the best at the game in terms of the smartest, yet you're making fun of that purchase? I mean, I made money on it. I mean, come on now. I, I'm, I'm teaching you how to flip. You should learn. Uh, PSA 10, number 75. Fireworks, PSA 10. Fireworks, PSA 10. Fireworks, PSA 10. Favorite PSA 8. Green PSA 9. Got silver PSA 10 from Prismatic. I like that That insert's a lot better. It's a little bit more rare, obviously, than the prison breaks and the fireworks. More prison breaks. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Got a lot of these. Need to sell them. PSA 9. They're eventually going to dry up. I think a lot of his gradable base rookies have started to dry up. The pop report exploded initially, but... Trying to find centered, centering on football in 2023 Prism is much worse than basketball. Basketball, they got it right. Uh, football, tough. Very, very tough. You see that reflected in the pop reports thus far. Stroud's Prism rookie has just over a 50% gym rate, which I'm a little bit surprised by. Um, I would have expected it to be less. PSA 10 green. PSA 10 silver. Silver. And a silver, and another silver. Now we're getting into some prisms. Okay, prism 10. Let me have sold one or two of these. 10, 10, 10. Yeah, I know, it gets old, right? Getting all these 10s. 10, 9. All right, now I've got one more box to go through. So move that stack there. Let's keep finishing up these prisms. Nine, nine, PSA 10, and a PSA 9. Nines have dropped down to maybe the 40 range, some a little bit less. PSA 10s still holding strong at around 150. Silver flashback, PSA 10. It's only one of those I've graded. I probably should have got a couple more. PSA 9, oh, I've got some Wimbies. 
Que se victors. PSA 10. Global reach. Yeah, he has a global reach. He's 7'4". His wingspan's like 18 feet. Deep space. Deep space. Dude, he had an incredible game the other night. Like 34 points, 16 boards, 7-7. Seven and seven. Just some, some moves I've seen that is just physically not possible. The one where he caught the ball off of a pick, dribbled once, went around the back, and then finished with the left hand. And then he also had one where he crossed over to the left, or crossed over to the right, then crossed over to the left, power dribble down the lane, sweeping left hook from just inside the, the free throw line. Both completely unguardable. Like, it's like, what what do you even do? <laughs> I mean, only thing you got to worry about with him is just injury risk, given how frail he is. You, you just hope that nobody chops his legs down and, you know, causes a massive injury. But, dude, this guy's a freak. He is exactly what Giannis, the skill that Giannis should have had. I mean, Giannis has the physic, the, the physical ability now, but Wimby, his skill is off the charts. Completely off the charts. Also, the thing I like about him, I love that he can handle himself. I was talking to you know another uh, fellow uh, viewer of, of the channel and, and Arizona folk, just talking about how well he handles himself in press conferences. And it's just like, man... Like, I think that he, the NBA has a really bright future. If Wimby stays healthy, they have a very bright future. In terms of the next generation of, of people who are going to be replacing Steph, LeBron, and KD, you know, Steph is great in front of the camera. KD's kind of a, you know, who knows what KD is. He's, he's in his own head. And then LeBron, I mean, he mumbles and fumbles and stumbles through everything. Um, but, you know, people don't eviscerate him in the media because he's LeBron. But as it relates to the new people who are coming into the league and are going to be the face of the league, Victor's up there, man. He can do really, really well. Jokic, I think he can handle himself very well. Uh, Luka, I mean, Luka, I think he does well. The thing that's probably going to bother a lot of people is he's a, he is a crybaby. It's just, I hate to say he's a crybaby. I love Luka. I want him to be the face of the league, but he's not going to be the face of the league if he's going to be a big baby. So he's got to fix that. He's got to grow up. Take the diaper off. Don't be a baby. All right, red, green. Then we got some blue scopes. Some scopes. Some scopes. Some no scopes. And, oh, this is a green velocity. This one's rare. This is very, very rare. Don't want to gloss over that. Then PSA 10. Puka. Puka. Puka, puka. And, all right. So the, these two are my dad's cards, these next two. Just wanted to send these in because I meant to send them in a long time ago. Off center, left to right, but this next one makes up for it. Sweet MJ, let's go! 1999 or 1995 Flare New Heights. Just look at how beautiful of a card this is. Just how amazingly designed. Like this is what this symbolizes everything that Flare was. Imagine being a kid and busting that bad boy out of a pack. Goat, greatest of all time. Badass, epic design. Like, it's not shiny. It's not like, it's just, just very artistic. This, this, do all the people out there saying cards are art? Yes, this is art. The, this junk, that's not art. Not art. So, you know, if you're gonna wax some dongs, wax the dongs that are artistic. <laughs> I mean, that's just my recommendation. All right, here are a couple of cards that are also really, really nice. So a couple of these were regrades. I tried to get them regraded. This one did come back the same grade. This one came back the same grade. This one I tried with Beckett. Beckett at the National was just destroying everybody. Beckett gave this an 8.5. Uh, this card has been around the block a little bit. So I graded it first with PSA, came back a 9. We graded it with Beckett at the National. They gave it also an 8.5. Okay. Um, and that was after me cleaning the surface. So, I, I, you know, the first time I sent it to PSA, apparently I did leave some stuff on the surface in terms of like fingerprints or gunk. I didn't really, you know, get to wipe it down as well as I should have. So whenever I cracked it out, I wiped it down, sent it to Beckett, and it came back an 8.5. So I cracked it. I'm like, this card is Jim Mint. It is Jim Mint. I know it is Jim Mint. So I cracked it, resubmitted all these over to PSA, and you know, got the grade. So PSA originally graded this a nine. 
I sent it to Beckett. Beckett gave it an 8.5. <laughs> and maybe, maybe even less than, maybe they gave it an 8. I don't know. I mean, at the National, Beckett had no idea what they were doing. They had no idea. None whatsoever. Converse that with two years ago at the National, Beckett was supposedly very lenient. I mean, based on the grades I got, I, I was very happy with everything that I got. So they, they have no idea what they're doing. It's, you know, depends on who's grading and what day it is. This one was an eight originally. It came back an eight. And I don't know. I think this one may have, may have been an eight or nine. It came back an eight or nine. So, you know, I'm just very glad that this one came back a 10. Very, very glad. Because uh, that card's gym mint. This one, man, I'm so tempted. I am so tempted to send this in to SGC or someone else. I think it is Jim Mint. Um, it is a thicky. It's a thicky. I get it. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see if I send them in a little bit later. All right, guys. Let's go over to some finances really quick. Uh, there are some assumptions here. Um, the PSA 10s on these rare airs usually go over 100. I've got them conservatively for 50. The PSA 9s may do like 10, 15, 20 bucks. So it may balance out a little bit. Uh, these retros, dude, I, again, I have this stuff super conservative. That includes that big rookie of the year PSA 10. I think I'm going to get, I think I'm going to do really, really well on that card. Finest, 60. The silver for 125. Those cards are going to do better than that. The silver's probably going to do over 200. Championship Spirit, I just sold for 170. I had it at 125. So you can see just how conservative my underwriting is. Last couple, Joe Maurer, Pop 58, Tops Chrome rookies have done 425 plus. Um, so all these, one card I did not show on here, I, I did sell as soon as I listed it, was a Upper Deck Triple Dimensions LeBron James PSA 9. I sold it for $74.99, buy it now. Um, so you can skim through. I don't want to go through every single one because there's just a ton of cards on here. A couple that I am going to have to adjust downwards, likely the Prism Break Silvers after fees are going to be less than 100 These Prisms, I think I should be able to squeeze out 125 after fees, maybe. Uh, then we've got the optic hollows. Those are unfortunately coming down. The pinks, I think that I'm 175 is pretty, pretty good. Um, they've been going more than that. I sold one at auction for 247, although some have been low 200s. Uh, red and green nines. I think that's fair. Uh, the nines have been around hundred for all these parallels. Blue scope. I think those are in the 350 range. So I'm going to do a little bit better than that. Green velo, 200 is probably right. Um, we're going to lose money on that. And then Puka for 100. That's about right after fees. They're about 115. Then the rest of these cards are uh, those are the the regrades. So I got to figure out all that stuff. I guess I didn't do all 171 because these last ones I sent in for a buddy. I sent these in for a friend. He um, uh, had some old Jerry Rice and old late 90s stuff, so I just tacked them on at the end. That stuff does not grade well. It does not grade well. And I don't think that he really knows how to prep cards either in terms of just wiping them down with a microfiber cloth. He just sent them in the top loaders that they came in. I'm like, dude, try. I mean, you're kind of wasting your money, but um, whatever. Threw them on at the end and, and you know, didn't really work out for him. So of the ones I sent in, again, I, I got to allocate all these expenses. So th these were 15. I'll add the shipping costs later. We're looking at roughly $6,500 in cost of goods sold, $12,546 in terms of receivables, grading expense $2,100. It's going to be higher than that. You've seen some of these are, are estimated to be a little bit lower. 43% uh, ROI, almost four grand. So I'd, I'd probably make about four grand off of that order too. So good order, good order, and... Um, no, I don't want to save that. Yes, I do. I want to save that. All right. So that's all I got, guys. Uh, let me know what you all think down below in the comment section. I uh, did this in just a little over 30 minutes. So uh, we'll see you guys next time.